Sarah from Malcolm Bus Ladies, and we're in a really, really bearish market that seems to be hot throughout of 2018. And today, I want to focus a little bit on the barriers that we have towards mass adoption and how could we possibly overcome them. And many people in the industry are still too new to remember Bitcoin's many bubbles, yet this latest one is so epic because of the amount of money bleeding out. But is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Could Bitcoin's plummeting price hold the key to mass adoption? We're gonna take a look at the various factors getting in the way of mass adoption and how a lower price along with removing these other obstacles could be the trigger to crypto's recovery. And one of the first things that I think that's stopping us from mass adoption is actually the volatility. And this time last year, Bitcoin was approaching its all-time high of almost $20,000. Now it's flirting with $3,000 with some analysts calling it for a low of $1,500. And that's a staggering drop by anyone's standard. And while there's every possibility that the price will skyrocket back up again, such fluctuations are not for the faint-hearted. They're also not suitable for use as a currency. Plenty of stable coins are in the market, which may eventually leave Bitcoin behind as an everyday exchange of value, but they won't make Bitcoin redundant. In fact, its plummeting price could be the catalyst that brings in the real money. No professional investor is going to buy when the price is inflated by speculation. When there's blood on the streets and institutional investors start to buy, the low price will mark a milestone for mass adoption. Then we've got the usability, which is my number two pick. And even if you go for a generally recognized, easy to use exchange like Coinbase, it's still no walk in the park. And in a society that's used to contactless payments or paying with a smartphone, walking around a store waiting for a transaction confirmation is taking a backward step. And we're getting better at it with cryptocurrencies like Dash, for example, claiming industry first and allowing instant payment confirmations. But there's still a long way to go. I mean, 42 character addresses have to be replaced by names and clanky hardware wallets that need lengthy configurations are going to get thrown out. Unfathomable interfaces of decentralized exchanges will need to be tailored to a lay market. They'll have to go mobile without 5,000 hoops to jump through before customers can log in. The next one and very important is actual scalability and how to scale blockchains for mass adoption has been the question on everybody's lips, especially since 2017 saw so CryptoKitties crush Ethereum and the Bitcoin blockchain gets so backed up that transactions times went through the roof. But the Lightning Network is making some good progress despite the downward turn in price. Ethereum too is working hard on scaling solutions like Snarks, and the Plasma protocol. Plasma will essentially allow hundreds of thousands of transactions to happen off-chain, enabling mass adoption and speed without clogging up the network. And a few companies are working on incorporating Plasma into their technology stack. Digitex Futures, for example, as a hybrid exchange, will use the speed of centralized servers for matching orders and Plasma technology to offer decentralized account balances. The next one will be the regulation and many people argue that regulation will stifle innovation but the big banks and institutional investors simply won't get on board until they know they're operating within the lines of the law. For example, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan have had their fair share of working against market interest, the crypto still somehow needs their seal of approval. And more exchanges that offer both derivative and spot trading are going to start appearing. In fact, the launch of ICE markets backed in January 2019 is now being postponed. It's causing a stir throughout the community. As a regulated ecosystem for global assets like a US-based Bitcoin futures exchange, BACT is likely to bring in the big players. And this means the stocks and bots sitting in paper contracts will migrate to the blockchain and the market cap will leap to incomprehensible heights. When valuable industries such as futures move to the blockchain, we've already seen profitable that can be. CME saw its daily volume increase by 93% in quarter to 2018 after introducing futures. And BACT will also open the door for smaller future exchanges like Digitex, to allow retail traders to make living trading derivatives on crypto. And the last one, but not least, will be security. And here I'll be talking about cybersecurity, not the ongoing debate about security versus utility token. And the US SEC and UK FCA are stepping up their efforts to prevent ICO scams. 
Castilians and exchanges continue their game of whack-a-mole with the hackers, but until the security of funds becomes, well, more secure, users won't want to risk losing all their funds to an exchange hack. And I think that 2019 will see crypto insurance providers coming to the market, although the process is a complex one. And understanding the risk associated with being a cryptocurrency custodian or with futures trading on a volatile market like crypto isn't easy. But I just want to say that even though I'm sounding very negative about it, I do want to say that there are barriers to mass adoption that are being worked on. And when institutions are comfortable being in the space when providers can offer some kind of insurance, regulation gets it right and Bitcoin price gets low enough, the sea change will surely begin. And all these barriers to mass adoption are being worked on regardless of the lowering price. The bear market is allowing developers to push out the products that will lead to mass adoption of crypto. And it's just a question of when. And this is a sort of a question I'd want you to answer to me. So let me know your opinions. What do you think out of those five that I've mentioned is actually a potential stopper for us? Or maybe you've got your personal opinion about it and disagree with me on one of them. Regardless of it, let me know in the comments what you think of it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video or just dislike it if you think I'm completely wrong. Remember to follow me on Twitter, Alkin Sarah, and follow us, Alkin Bus Ladies, as well, so you can stay up to date to when we make videos. I hope you all enjoyed this video and you share your opinion with me as I absolutely love having conversation with you guys. So I hope you all have a good one, like I said, and catch you later. Bye bye.